Welcome to Elite Expert Insider Podcast, where we will inspire, motivate, and educate entrepreneurs, innovators, and growth seekers. Brought to you by Elite Online Publishing, making the best and brightest in the industry number one best-selling authors. 80% of people say they want to write a book. We're assuming that's the same for you. If so, contact us at www.eliteonlinepublishing.com and make your book a reality. Hi, Melanie Johnson here along with Jen Foster. How are you doing, Jen? It's an awesome day. It is. It's gorgeous. Every day is a gorgeous day. You can make it as good as you want it to be. So remember, while you are here, we want you to subscribe. Make sure you subscribe to our podcast. It's the most important thing because we have the most cool guest on. You always learn something. You always get motivated. You always get inspired. And it makes your day a better day. So make sure you subscribe to the podcast. Today, we're going to talk about how to help raise your sons to be executives, how you can make a difference in your son. We have a number one best-selling author who wrote the book, Raising an Executive. Now, Jen has two sons. I have two sons. Um, you know, we're all about this. If you know someone who has a son, if you have sons, if you are a son, you need to be watching and listening to this podcast today. So we're going to uh, welcome True Tamlin. True, thanks for coming today and, and going to share this experience with us and help us to raise better boys. Oh, thanks so much, Melody and Jen, <clears throat> for having me on the show. I'm super excited to be here. Great. Well, True, tell us a little bit of your background, kind of how you came into writing this book and helping people and your keynote speaker as well. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So I'll just go right into it. So my story is that I was 13 years old when I got the call <clears throat> saying that my dad, Ken Tamplin, was offered to become the lead singer for Journey. And this is right in the 07, 08 kind of date range. <clears throat> you might remember the recession happening right about then too. Another thing that you might not know is that there was a big writer strike out here in LA and my dad's profession at the time was placing music in film, film and television. And so you can imagine the pressure that he was undergoing, not being able to place any music because no new movies were being created and then getting the offer of a lifetime to become the lead singer. I mean, as an artist, you have this inner gnawing to become famous, to become well known. Um, and the only catch was that it was a five year touring contract and I was 13, my sister was 15. And so he had a big decision to make. And he actually ended up saying no because it was simply too great of a sacrifice. And he was a praying man and felt strongly that the Lord just really did not want him to go. Um, and so anyways, as a result of that decision, I went on to have some crazy early successes, none of which I truly don't believe would have happened had he taken the journey gig. Uh, to rattle off a few of those, if I may, it's like, um, and I'm doing this for the purpose of executives hearing my story, and so that, because I know that they want the same for their own son. So I was a big soccer guy. I covered our local news newspaper several times, the Daily Pilot. I gave my grad speech. I got a full-ride soccer scholarship to the college of my choice, maintained a 4.0 summa cum laude GPA, and then like you said, I became a number one Amazon best-selling author and now a keynote speaker. I'm not 22 anymore, but that was all by the age of 22 years old. Now, I probably may have figured it out in the long haul after recovering from not having a dad during those critical years, but there's no way that I would have had that early of a success rate, if you will, without a father figure as a, in, as a foundation inside my life. You know what I mean? So that's kind of my story. Awesome. And for, and for your dad to make that choice and make sure that he kept that uh, intuition or, that, or the prayer answered and make, making that decision, I think, really, really was awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I will just forewarn you. So I got my book right here, too, <clears throat> Raising an Executive. And I must say that the, I'll, spoiler alert, chapter one of my book is called Sacrificing Your Journey. And it's a play on words. You wouldn't know it without that backstory, but everyone has a journey um, that will often be a really critical decision to choose family over a career, a pivotal moment, if you will. And, uh, and I really feel like you should not be trying to strive for success if you're having failure in the home. So we can talk about that more in a little bit, but that's, that's an important point. 
I'm a true believer in that. Well, first of all, I'm a huge Journey fan, huge, huge, huge. So I'm so impressed that your dad can sing like that. <laughs> Holy cow, that, that's just amazing. And it wasn't just, I look at it, it's not just um, your successes. Those are things you can write on paper, but the mental stability, the emotional stability, the security that you felt that, um, that you had along the way and the mentoring that you got from your dad the entire time that he yeah. was in there. You can't even put a dollar value on what that is. Absolutely. Yeah. So to your point, like I point to those successes, Melanie, simply because without a foundation laid, like a psychological one uh, or other, mm -hmm. I could not have built upon a foundation to attain those successes. Why? Well, it's because I would still be figuring myself out. I'd be insecure. I might be questioning my sexuality. I might be still figuring out who I am and who I, who loves me and who I belong. So it's, it's like without that foundation laid, there's no way in hell like I was going to be able to attain these early successes. So to your point, I only point to these because it's an acknowledgement that I had that foundation laid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love that. Well, tell us a little bit about some of the chapters in your book or some of the, the, I guess the ideas behind, you know, raising this executive and how you can leave on. I love how you say carry on your legacy. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So there's, a uh, number of points I could make right now, but um, I guess a couple of my favorites. Let's start out with one of them. I call it the Charlie Brown effect just because everyone knows about it. Uh, it's Charlie Brown's teacher, classic, wah, 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 wah. Um, every, every, every parent has experienced the Charlie Brown effect. And I think I quote my dad, Ken Tamplin, saying to me, and it's from the perspective of the son here, saying, What? I told you that a thousand times and you listen to him, like insert insignificant relationship here. I don't know why, but it's a fact. It's a phenomenon that every, ex like every single parent will experience. And if you haven't already, you will. It's that sometimes your son can't hear something from you. I don't know why he could, he hammered me with some stuff that I, it just some, some soccer coach that didn't mean any, like anything to me would tell me and it clicks. And so my advice to parents is stop freaking out or stressing out or even or wasting your time spinning your wheels strategizing on how to drive that message home from you and instead spend that time strategizing elsewhere and by elsewhere i mean find a slightly older than your son cooler that's the key cooler mentor that shares your values that can translate your values into your son. And for that, I recommend Young Life. Now, Young Life is a Christian organization, but both Christian and non-Christian parents love it alike because the mentors are just so, such good influences on them. It keeps every kid out of trouble. And that is the key to, to getting some of those really important points that you as a parent simply cannot be the one to tell him or her uh, to do. And then if not Young Life, which they pretty much have a local chapter pretty much everywhere these days, um, you can naturally create a mentorship bond through either paying for tutoring that like, yeah, you want the tutoring for your son, but like naturally a, a relationship is going to form between the tutor and your son. And if that doesn't work, like, you know, let's say it just didn't work out with that guy. You can also do that with one-on-one -on -one private coaching or becoming innovative, but don't force a relationship. Create one naturally through a, like I said, a tutoring or a one-on-one or -on -one coaching type situation. You know, because my other question was going to be, I mean, Jen and I are both single moms. So, um, mm -hmm. and in my case, the dad's not really around or an influence into the kids. So it's like, well, how do you do that? And that really kind of answered the question is to find mentors, other male role models that they can connect with. And I like the key that they have to be cooler, right? They got to be Big cool time. that they can connect to. Big time. I mean, think about it. Your sons, I don't know if they're skaters or not, but like I know it drives moms crazy like when their sons are spending too much time down at the skate park because those are really bad influences. But I'm telling you, they embody. It's not just that skating is inherently going to influence your son. It's that they embody that quality, coolness. That is the most important quality. And naturally, someone who's just one stage of life ahead of your son will have an, an uncanny ability to influence them like nobody's business. So get that mentor for him. Yeah, I love that. That's awesome. So what would you say are some of the um, other things besides the mentorship 
that a parent should be doing. Um, and I, I love that you said, you know, it's really that being selfish. I, I always tell people, you know, you can invest in your business, which is great. But when you invest in your family, that lasts for generations. And you don't want to screw that up because that screws up generations versus, you know, you might not get a, a, a listing done or a contract in. That's not going to affect everybody's life. So what are some other things that you have that are key points that fathers and, and single moms should be looking at um, for their sons? Great question. So let's take chapter two of my book. It's called Even If It's Ping Pong. And the quote in that book, every single chapter has a quote from my dad. Uh, it's, dude, whatever it is, even if it's ping pong, let's get the best paddles, the best balls, the best coaching, the best tables, and let's do ping pong. I have seen, because this book is engineered towards executives that are incredibly driven, that really are sticklers for trying to get their sons to like almost too successful too quickly. Mm -hmm. They have a problem with forcing not just success. I'm a promoter of success, but promoting success in the way that their son is going to strive for it. So let me give you an example. Oftentimes, it's like my son will get a degree in finance because that's where I started. I know that there's money in finance. That might not be right for your son. I want you to push him to his best ability. But like the chapter says, even if it's ping pong. And so maybe your son is more artsy. Maybe your son isn't a sports guy. Maybe your son I, isn't right for college. Like maybe there are some things that your son might not be exactly like you. You need to find out what it is that he is great at and is going to propel at. Einstein gave that example of if you grade every animal by its ability to climb a tree, the monkey wins every time. Your son might be a giraffe. And giraffes have really long necks and can do things that monkeys cannot do. You need to find what your son is good at and loves and then propel him to become the best at that. And that is how you make your son go further, not the way or the nuance of exactly following in his father's footsteps because it worked for you. He might be very different from you, but you still need to help him become his best, not the best version of you, best carbon copy version of you. So. Right. I think that's very key. As a parent, I'm constantly thinking about how I can push them or get them to do something that I want them to do when I really need to take a step back and say, what do they want to do and what are they best at? For really, sure. all those points you said, that's great. Yeah, and sometimes what they want to do, especially when they're young, it lasts for a nanosecond, right? They want to play guitar or ping pong. Right for, you know, and it lasts two or three months or they're a skater and then they're done and then they're on to the next thing. But I like saying that it'd be the best at whatever that is for that time frame. I've got one kid that's ready to go off to college now and he's vacillating like, well, I'm not sure what I want to do. I think I want to do engineering. He started blacksmithing. So that's in the ping pong category, right? So he's blacksmithing, oh. making all this cool stuff in our backyard. He says, mom, if I could blacksmith for a living, I would blacksmith. And like, and I don't know that you can make a really good living blacksmithing, but you know, it's a really cool hobby. So yeah, yeah the artsy part that right. I was just talking about. For sure. And I will tell you one story, Melanie, to put you at ease. It's like, I do agree with you that there's no money in blacksmithing unless you work for Knott's Berry Farm and you're like the blacksmith in the corner that people see. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, but truly, um, there's no money, but I will tell you with those kind of odd hobbies like that, here's a really interesting quality about those hobbies. Those that strive for like, let's say to become a professional dancer or whatever, whatever that odd hobby is. Okay. I'm, I'm not going to go on a list. What ends up happening is those doing it for the money. Like let's take take acting as an example. Those doing it for the money surprisingly never find the money. Those doing dancing for the money to end up on stage with Kesha or whomever, don't end up on stage with Kesha. It's only the ones that truly love it that last long enough to continue plugging away at their craft and then the money and fame comes. As a result, not of them pursuing the money and fame, screw the money and fame, I just do this because I love it. They plug away at their craft and all of a sudden they become famous in their own right as a result of just becoming the best in this. But I do not advocate whatsoever for teetering between like all these different hobbies. You got to stick with one and just do it. And one more point, if I may, is I'm telling the sons out there, man, number one killer of your time is video games, video games, video and TV, video games and TV screen time, man. If you were to channel the amount of time 
that you are spending on the screen into anything. You could be the bomb.com at that thing, but you can't, you won't if you continue with the screen time. It's got to go. Number one killer of your time. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Amen for that. And for everyone and then, listening, rewind and listen to that again. About yeah, and hey, <laughs> let me say one more thing about that. If your son is into girls, I'm telling you, dude, they don't like the video games and they don't like the TV. I'm telling you, you don't deserve the girl of your dreams if you put up, if you continue doing that. You just don't. I really hope that that message gets across to someone. That's what got me. Is like I was I was addicted to video games. RuneScape was my jam. Like Club Penguin, whatever. Like I would spend so many hours doing video games, and I just found that girls didn't like guys into video games. Girls like dudes that were really good at like in high school it was soccer it was like a sport or later it became finance and money like that's that is how you get the girl of your dreams man so if you're a late teenager hearing this i'm telling you drop the video game and channel it and that that pain you feel when you're not qualified for the girl let that sink in and just destroy you for a time to channel that energy and that time that you're spending on on the screen into something that she, that she likes so there you go for that one. I love that. You were speaking to both my boys. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so true. Bes besides uh, keynote speaking and you being an author of the book, do you also do coaching? What are some of the other services you provide? Yeah, I definitely do one-on-one -on -one coaching. In fact, that's actually my favorite because I get a lot of breakthroughs. What ends up happening is I'm like talking to the dad and like the son who's like 17 is like looking at me in a suit like unrelatable, old. And then, and then he realizes, like, I'm literally his age. Like, it is hysterical to me. You know, I'm, like, talking with him. Oh, you got caught cheating? Oh, my gosh, you're an idiot. You put it on the brim of your hat. You should have put it on the inside of your water bottle and turn it, you know, like, <laughs> with the answer right. And they're like, oh, my, he knows. Like, I'm, ter I'm totally joking. You don't do that. Don't cheat. It's terrible. But, like, we have this breakthrough moment. So, anyways, to answer your question, yeah, I do coaching. I have a killer raising an executive mentorship program. It is the most exciting thing in my life happening right now by far. Uh, I have just this killer slew of mentors, a lot of them finance and tech related. I actually just had also the owner and CEO of In-N-Out Burger speak to our group as well. Um, so just a killer mentorship uh, program that we did last summer. We're going to do it again this summer. Let me see what else. I got the book, but yeah, whether it be workshops or coaching, like I've Pretty much wherever there's a need, I fulfill it. Awesome. Where can people find more about the workshops? Those sound awesome. Thank yeah, um, just hit, hit up my site. True, it's my first and last name, truetamplin.com. So first and last name .com is where you can find out all that stuff. Great. And love the journey story. <laughs> uh, I'm still stuck on that one. <laughs> I'm going to go play some journey after this is over. Gotta well, thanks it. for stopping. Remember to subscribe to this podcast. I think we got some tremendous information. Get your kids off the video games. Find them mentors. You, make sure you spend time with them. Pick up True's book. Um, I think that's very helpful. I'm going to make sure we get it as well. So make sure you subscribe. And actually, if you're thinking about being a best-selling author, then contact us at Elite Online Publishing because that's what we do. We have made every single author that we've worked with number one on Amazon. So we would love to work with you as well. So look us up at EliteOnlinePublishing.com. And hey, we'll can see I, you next time. Can I add one thing to your group? Sure. Hey, guys, becoming a number one Amazon best-selling author has completely changed my life and my echelon. And so if you get the advantage to work, or get the opportunity to work with Melanie and Jen, do it because I'm telling you, it just took me from here and just into a completely different echelon. That's why I'm getting this interview on TV, on radio, on just everything. It doesn't matter your industry, become an Amazon number one best-selling author. It'll change your life. So just had to add that for your group. Love I appreciate that. that. We'll All talk right. to you next time. Have a great day. If you'd like to create the most powerful advertising tool for your business, contact us at EliteOnlinePublishing.com where we will help you create, publish, and make your book a number one bestseller and show you how to get new leads and more revenue for your business. If you'd like to check us out on our Facebook page, we have a free book for you as our gift. Just go and click free book. Remember to subscribe and leave a comment for our podcast. We would love to hear from you.